Before starting this video, I would like to give a shout out to my friends over at Glazeding. They've got the best curved tempered glass for the Poco F1 as well as the Galaxy A50. I don't think you can get the curved tempered glass anywhere else in India. And according to me, these are the best tempered glasses for the Poco F1 as well as the Galaxy A50. So if you want to check them out, do use the promo code Gizmo. They've got products for a lot of devices. And you can use the promo code Gizmo, like I said, for a 10% discount. So the link is in the description. Please check them out. Hey guys, Gizmodict here, and today we're gonna do a camera comparison between the Poco F1 and the Galaxy A50. So both of these phones are pretty hot selling phones around the 20,000 rupees price bracket, and today we'll find out finally which phone has a better camera. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. And if you guys want to watch more such videos, then definitely hit the red subscribe button. Now let's get started with the video. So we're gonna do this comparison in two parts. So first we're gonna compare the stock camera on the Poco F1 with the stock camera on the Galaxy A50. Then we're gonna move on to Google camera on the Poco F1 and the stock camera on the Galaxy A50. If you guys find this comparison unfair, then I can't do anything about it. It's not unfair because the Poco F1 supports Google camera very easily. On Galaxy A50, I tried tons of Google camera app, but none of them are perfectly compatible. So it's an advantage to the Poco F1 and if a phone is gonna support Google camera out of the box, I will be comparing it in my camera comparison. So with that out of the way, let's get started with the first comparison, which is the stock camera on both of these phones. So in broad daylight, as you can see, both of them, the Poco F1 and the Galaxy A50 do a very good job. If you're gonna take an overall average, I think that Poco F1 does slightly better in some of the photos. The colors are actually more accurate than they are on the Galaxy A50. But all in all, I think in broad daylight, both of these phones do a good job and I don't have any major complaints with either of them. The Galaxy A50 actually has a 25 megapixel sensor, but then by default, it does not shoot in that mode. You have to go to the settings and you have to change to the 3x4 H mode. And after that, it will shoot in the proper high resolution mode. But then the downside is that you don't have HDR when you're shooting at the 25 megapixel resolution. So I would recommend you to stick to the default mode. But all in all, in broad daylight, both of these phones do a good job. The Galaxy A50 also gets a wide angle lens. So this is an 8 megapixel wide angle camera. So you've got that slight advantage on the A50 compared to the Poco F1. You can use the wide angle lens when you want to click a group photo or something like that. But do note that this is a fixed focus sensor and the quality is not as good as the primary sensor. So honestly, I don't think I need the wide angle sensor, but if you all want it, you have to go with the Galaxy A50. So that's a slight advantage there. Similarly, once again, when we move on to the indoor conditions, things are very similar. The Poco F1 and the Galaxy A50 are close. If you zoom into the photos, the Poco F1 has less noise, but then the A50 in some photos has more details than the Poco F1. But then that's about it. And one thing that I noticed was that the color accuracy was a bit better on the Poco F1. The Galaxy A50 has this bluish green tone sometimes, so that I didn't like. But then both of these phones still do a pretty good job. Then we come to the low lighting scenarios and here without any doubt, I have to give it to the Poco F1. The Poco F1 also gets a night mode which does a lot better than the Galaxy A50. And overall you can see that the Poco F1 gets a lot of things into the picture as compared to the Galaxy A50. So low light is a weak point of the camera on the Galaxy A50 and it definitely goes to the Poco F1. Then we talk about the portrait mode on the rear facing camera and both of them do a very good job. The Poco F1 has a better dynamic range, especially if you look at the face, if you look at the skies and if you look at my shirt, you can see that it's not blown out on the Poco F1. The Galaxy A50 kind of blows it out, so the Poco F1 keeps a lot of things into the picture, the dynamic range is better. So I like the portrait shots a bit more on the Poco F1. But then when we move on to the selfies, here the situations are reversed. The Galaxy A50 actually has better dynamic range, but the skin tone is not very accurate. For some reason, the skin tones look a bit washed out and this phone also is using some kind of beautification mode. I'm not sure what it's doing because I've kept all of these modes off, but then still for some reason, there is some kind of beautification happening on the Galaxy A50. So the skin tones are not as good as the Poco F1, but then if you look at the overall image, if you consider the highlights, the dynamic range, I think the Galaxy A50 is at a bit of an advantage here. So in terms of the rear facing camera, I think overall Poco F1 does a slightly better job. But then in terms of the front facing camera, the Galaxy A50 has a slight edge. Now we move on to Google camera on the Poco F1 and here's where things take a turn. So if you're going to talk about the rear facing camera, especially the output in daylight and indoor lighting, here there is not a lot of difference. I don't think Google camera makes that much of a difference, but where Google camera makes a difference 
is in dimly lit conditions as well as in terms of portrait mode so talking about dimly lit conditions here you've got night sight and nothing beats night sight you can see the samples of the poco f1 with night sight against the galaxy a50 and there is no comparison here the poco f1 is miles miles ahead and especially with night sight things get a lot better on the poco f1 so definitely in extremely low lighting conditions the poco f1 gets a big boost with google camera app and similarly in terms of portrait mode the rear facing camera portrait mode the output once again is a lot better than the galaxy a50 photos look a lot lively on google camera and overall i like it more than the galaxy a50 And then finally we come to the selfies and here I would like to point out one thing the Poco F1 for some reason shoots selfies in only 5 megapixel in the Google camera app whereas the Galaxy A50 has a 25 megapixel camera but then even in portrait mode the Galaxy A50 shoots at a lower resolution i think it's around 12 megapixels but even then if you look at the selfies the Poco F1 does a lot better the colors the dynamic range the skin tones are a lot better on the Poco F1 as compared to the Galaxy A50 And even if you zoom in the 5 megapixel sample on the Poco F1 has better detailing so it all comes down to the processing of the photo and Google camera does a lot better even at a lower resolution you've got more details and you've got a much better photo so i really like the selfies taken from the Poco F1 with Google camera so if you're going to consider Google camera into the picture it makes the Poco F1 overall a winner in terms of the camera comparison So if your major priority is taking a lot of photos I think you have to go with the Poco F1. You can use the stock app and you can also use Google camera to get the best photos in every situation possible. Lastly we're going to talk about video so here once again without any doubt it goes to the Poco F1. The Galaxy A50 can only shoot up to 1080p 30 fps but then the Poco F1 has a variety of frame rates. It has electronic image stabilization at full HD even the A50 has EIS at full HD but then the Poco F1 can also shoot videos at 60 fps and you can also go up to 4K so you have 4K 60 fps available on the Poco F1 so it's got a lot of more variety in terms of video so i think it's the Poco F1 that definitely takes a lead in the video department as well so overall if we consider everything the Poco F1 is the winner of this camera comparison the Galaxy A50 is not bad it still has a very good camera but then The Poco F1 without any doubt with Google camera and with the stock camera app simply crushes the Galaxy A50. So if you want the best camera for under 20000 rupees the Poco F1 is something that you should buy. I hope this clears out a lot of confusion that you guys had between both of these phones. I will be making a full review of the Galaxy A50, the M30 and so on. So if you don't want to miss that out, do hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon as well. That's all for now from my side. If you guys want to see more behind the scenes content, please follow my Facebook, Twitter and Instagram pages. Thanks for watching this video and I will be back in your notifications very very soon. Peace.